battlegrounds in the states you want to. But if you can tell me who wins two or three of uh, Florida, uh, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, I can tell you who the next president's going to be. <laughs> It's going to win Florida. I think we're probably going to lose Pennsylvania, and that takes it down to Ohio. And uh, uh, Ohio is a battleground state. Uh, it's going to be a knockdown drag out in Ohio. We have to win Ohio because we can't take four more years of this. I don't know about you, but I can't live through four more years of our close just briefly with my favorite topic and that is how bad things are uh, financially in America. And I want every one of you to know this and I want every one of you to tell everybody who listens. Almost any American you ask, how are things financially for America? They'll say, oh, you know, they're pretty bad. But if you ask them about details of it, they don't know. They don't really know how bad things are. If I tell you that, they're in, that we're going into debt, that the deficit every year is 1.6 trillion, it goes right like this because nobody knows what 1.6 trillion is. When I got there three and a half years ago, the national debt was 10 trillion. Today, the national debt's knocking on the door, 16 trillion, and again, it goes right to the top because nobody can possibly fathom how bad that is. If I narrow it down a little bit and tell you that the federal government takes in 2.2 uh, trillion, spends 3.8 trillion, and if you took the 2.2 trillion, and all you did was pay Social Security, Social Security, Medicare, not Medicaid, uh, and the interest on the national debt, that $2.2 trillion would be gone. That's how bad things are. The federal government spends $11 billion a day, and they have to pay it every night. They pay their, their debts every night. But they're short $4.5 billion. To put, that in the, to put that in perspective for you, when I was governor of this great state, the budget for the state of Idaho was $3.5 billion. They borrow that. Every single day, that and a billion dollars more. This can't go on. This is an awful situation. Every day they borrow 4.5 billion of new money to pay their bills that night, but they also borrow 50 to 70 billion to pay, to pay the people who are lined up out the door saying, hey, you owe me because I've, bar I've loaned it to you before. That's the state of play. All that has to happen is one day they quit loaning us money and we're out of business. This is a frightening situation. It made me angry. I went and watched them do it. This is not make-believe. They're not printing money. They're borrowing money. At that time, about a fourth of it was coming from China. About a fourth of it comes from uh, other countries. And about half of it comes from wealthy banks and individuals around the world. That's the state of play of the country that we have. We can't do this anymore. We can't do this anymore. We've got to stop it. You say to me, that is so bad. How can this possibly stop? It can stop. It can stop if we go back to basics, if we go back to the power of the individual, and we go back to the acceptance. The government can't fix this. Government can never fix this. But you know who can fix it? We can fix it. The American people can fix it. And this country needs us and the Republican Party more than it's ever needed us. the senator being here and uh, we'll hear more good words from our elected leaders tonight at the dinner which we'll talk about in a little bit. I uh, wanted to make sure to announce to people uh, we'll be dealing with the results of the nominating committee tomorrow and who the delegates are going to the national convention in Tampa uh, but the senator touched on that. Uh, one of the things that you all need to know uh, maybe you don't know is that in addition to 32 delegates and 32 alternates we're entitled up to an equal number or 64 guests, official guests, at the National Convention. So if you're not a delegate or an alternate, but you're nonetheless interested in being with the Idaho delegation, and we will all be together at the convention, functions, meals, uh, going down to the convention hall, uh, please let us know. Uh, the lady we need to get in talk, contact with is Shirley Taylor. Shirley's over here with the elephant shirt, appropriately. Shirley's our 
convention coordinator, and she does a fantastic job. There will be a meeting tomorrow at 4.15 uh, where all of us need to come together and make sure that Shirley knows that we're interested in going. If you can't be here at 4.15 tomorrow, you need to let her know before you leave because she needs to know who those people are before we all leave here. She has a lot of work to do between now and the August convention. So please check with Shirley. If you can't find her, don't know who she is, forget her name, ask Jonathan or I, we'll get you to the right place. Uh, before we bring our, our national committee man and woman up here, um, I've asked Jonathan to queue up a video. We're gonna do it after, okay? We're gonna do it after we hear from our national committee man and woman. So, Idaho, like every other state, has three members of the Republican National Committee. Idaho has every bit the same power as New York, California, or Texas at the national committee level. Uh, we're very proud of our national committee man and woman. Uh, we'd like to ask them to come up here together and uh, give us a report. So our national committee woman, Cindy Moyle, and our national committee man, Damon Watkins. Please welcome them. Cindy's going to join us at the dinner tonight, is that right? Okay. David. Okay, Cindy, uh, that's not good. Um, for those of you who don't, don't know me, my name is Damon Watkins. Uh, I represent, uh, I live in Idaho Falls, Bonneville County. Woo! I'm filling in, um, there's a few of us around. Uh, the back half of Blake Hall's term, uh, of your national committeeman, and I've really enjoyed that. I'm, I'm obviously going to run again tomorrow uh, for the four years, but I wanted to give you uh, a little bit of a background on what's happening at the national committee level and kind of my specific involvement with that. But before I do, I want to just take two minutes and thank uh, Norm for his service as chairman. I don't think that uh, a lot of us really appreciate the dedication that goes into serving in, in these capacities, and specifically Norm's. And my first observation in watching Norm lead a meeting came when he was serving as general counsel at the RNC through the transition and election of our new chairman, Reince Priebus. Uh, Michael Steele and Reince and several others were running against each other, and Cindy and I were sitting on the front row, and Norm ran the entire meeting in front of the whole world. Uh, well, my world was C-SPAN, so in front of all of C-SPAN. Uh, watching. He did it with grace, he did it with uh, dignity, and I'm, I hope that we all can give him a wonderful send-off and a deep appreciation of uh, gratitude uh, for the way he has represented us. And for those of you who, who don't know, Cindy is not running again for National Committee Woman. And uh, I'd like to give her just a, a quick little shout out because she has been on the committee for over 16 years. And when you stop about, and when you stop and think about that, all of the meetings that she's attended, uh, the personal sacrifice that that's taken upon her family, the financial sacrifice of attending the meetings, it's not, it's not cheap, you know, flying to Washington, D.C. or to New Orleans or to four places around the country four times a year. Um, and so that is, uh, has been a toll. But Cindy has been an iconic figure representing Idaho, um, and uh, she's taken me under her wing, and I've watched her. She's got tremendous respect on the committee, and so I'd like to thank her publicly as well. <laughs> By way of background, I work for a company uh, called Melaleuca, and my boss, uh, Frank Vandersloot, put me on leave a couple of months ago to go full-time on uh, President Romney's campaign. I managed 10 states on the finance division. And Norm, uh, and the reason I mention that is because it gives me a little bit of a, a, an increased look into uh, the inner sanctum of how a presidential campaign is run and the relationship that the Republican National Committee has with the presumptive nominee. And when Mitt Romney became the presumptive nominee, uh, Norm touched on this a little bit earlier, there was what we call a joint fundraising agreement that the RNC then partners with the campaign. And so Romney for President Incorporated turns into uh, Romney Victory. 
And what that means is that the maximum donation that you could receive as a, as a candidate in a primary election is $2,500. But when you enter into this agreement, he becomes the presumptive nominee, the Democrats have one too, you are becoming essentially the father of mul multiple accounts to be used in direct coordination with the campaign. Essentially independent expenditure. It's the only legal entity in the country that can use those dollars in uh, expenditure and coordination of the campaign. And so the maximum amount of money that Governor Romney has now per individual is $75,000 a person. And so it's been a huge advantage to the governor to go out and raise, raise money in those increments. But Norm mentioned Idaho. Out of all of the states that Governor Romney had to choose from, to say, I trust the leadership, I trust the organization, uh, he looked to Idaho as one of those states to say, I'm going to allow you to hold uh, the money that we raise into your federal account uh, to you be used in uh, swing states. And what that does for Idaho is two things. One, it allows us to be at the point of the attack. We're now thrust as a state party into the middle of a presidential campaign, which is uh, really a unique opportunity as far as influence. Uh, the other thing that it allows us to do is assess administrative fees over the management of that money, uh, which will become a revenue source uh, to our party, which is critical to the way we organize and run our operation. Um, so, and Norm uh, was instrumental in that, I was instrumental in that, and, and Norm Holt actually had the signature authority to get that done. So I think out of all the accomplishments that we've had in the last few months, getting that done has been the single biggest uh, wonderful opportunity for our party to, to be done. I've, I've got a great relationship with Reince. I was on the phone with him yesterday. I've gone around the country with him, uh, raising money for this presidential trust account, uh, which obviously will benefit Idaho. Uh, we're poised, guys, uh, to win. And I see this from the inside. We're looking at $800 million being spent in five or six days. Senator Rich alluded to that a little bit. Um, but we are so close of winning and taking back our country and restoring the freedom of free enterprise, capitalism, because this president doesn't have a clue on the way free markets are run and should be handled. And so I'm so excited to be in the middle of that uh, and to help with that. And um, I would, I don't think we take any questions. But that's, uh, that's my